Well, Mariam, thank you very much. Nice presentation. Uh, dear chairs, colleagues, friends, I'd like to thank the organizing committee for uh, this invitation to this meeting. So, hepatitis delta, can we suppress, can we only suppress, or can we cure hepatitis delta? These are my disclosures. Since this is the first presentation of Delta of the day, I will really kind of make a short summary. Uh, please remember is a small RNA defective virus, which requires S antigen for propagation, but not, that's my understanding, for replication. It's a rare disease, 10, 20 million of HPV patients are also Delta co-infected. It's a super aggressive chronic viral liver disease and there has been no therapies for 45 years specifically um, approved for Delta. We are using interferon with several issues about efficacy and safety. And the endpoints of Delta, really the usual endpoints, we use this slide or a similar slide for HPV. The overall goal is to improve survival. To improve survival, we have to reduce complications. To reduce complications, we to suppress the virus with or without this antigen loss. What is different in Delta? There are these kind of sort of endpoints or trials which normally we don't use in HPV or HCV, more than to lock decline of aremia, uh, with or without LT normalization. This is very specific for hepatitis Delta and the relevance of these uh, kind of uh, relative declines of viremia in Delta are not completely clear. What is Delta cure? Well, uh, maybe our negative delta RNA of therapy at least 24 weeks, probably one year. And we can discuss whether we need with or without this antigen loss. Remember, this is RNA virus, so off therapy should be enough, but uh, as antigen, uh, if antigen is still there and the virus delta is very infectious, you might have a late relapse. So, but there is another very important point you have to consider. What is negative delta RNA? What is undetectable? Well, you know, there are different studies, different definitions. Please remember, I will mention these data during my presentation. Some of the studies are using undetectable means target not detectable. Uh, other studies means undetectable equal below the liminal quantification. Other studies completely different endpoints, such as below 100 copies or units in some additional studies. So. Remember, that's a major open problem for hepatitis delta yet. So uh, treatment strategies, we can cure. This is really similar to hepatitis B. We can cure. Cure means short-term therapy, probably less than one year. RNA negativity is the most important endpoint, possibly with this antigen loss. Uh, but the endpoint is by definition of therapy. Uh, or you can use a long-term suppressive therapy, uh, more than one year, then again, PCR negativity, or this new endpoint for Delta, more than two log decline and normal T levels at one year, but of course, this will be long-term, long-term therapy. So this is a scheme, all the possible targets for hepatitis Delta. I will briefly review some of these, uh, most of these targets, considering cure versus control. Please remember we are using oral therapy for B in Delta, but oral therapy for B does not interfere directly with Delta replication. So let's start with Bulevertide. As you know, why Bulevertide is the only drug available, at least in Europe. It has been available in 2020, in July has been widely used in many, many countries. It's a synthetic small peptide that is able to basically uh, kind of uh, stop the NTCP, which is bile acid receptor, which is the entry door for B and Delta. And by doing this, the drug is able to stop spreading of Delta into the liver, but actually is not able to stop viral application in the infected cells. So that's a very surprising drug. We never had this drug in HBV and HCV. So who is responsible for reducing viremia? I will show many data in which this drug is able to reduce viremia, but of course, this, we have to look for a sort of indirect way. Something else is reducing viremia, not directly the drug. So first option, uh, monotherapy for one year, possible short-term therapy. These are the data, registration, real-life data, 70% uh, virological response. Uh, you know, you have a 40%, 50% biochemical, 40% combined response. 
Good news, very similar data across studies, very similar data in cirrhotics and non-cirrhotics, but there is no ice antigen decline and only 20% achieve undetectable complete virological suppression. So this cannot be used as a monotherapy short term. Option two, long-term monotherapy. This is a data we presented first time uh, at ESL 2023. And you see, the longer you treat the patient, the better are the biochemical response, the better are the uh, combined response. Even PCR negativity goes from 12% to 20%, but still only 20%. So we are not really curing Delta patients here. We are suppressing Delta patients. And this has been confirmed in the large SAFD study, which is probably the largest available you know, uh, cohort of patients, a retrospective multicenter pan-European real-life bulevertide monotherapy patients. More than 200 patients, more than 40 centers across Europe, and that's bulevertide monotherapy up to two years. Again, the longer you treat the patients, the better the results, up to 40% PCR negativity a year, two in compensated cirrhotics and many already with esophageal viruses. So long-term suppression is possible, while we are not show, showing any cure because they are on therapy. But remember, these are cirrhotics with esophageal viruses and cancer. So maybe cure of Delta is relevant, but now what is more relevant is to reduce decompensation, reduce cancer, and increase albumin, and this has been shown by this specific study. What's about PEG interferon and bulevertide as a combination? That's a large uh, experience in France. This is just one of the studies available. Some of the patients in France were treated with bulevertide monotherapy on the left. Some of the patients were with de novo combination with PEG interferon. This is not a randomized controlled trial. It's just two different cohorts. Patients are different, but if you look at the uh, uh, kind of yellow column, PCR negativity, 33% on monotherapy, I feel you, year one, and 63% on de novo combination of year one with PEC interferon and bulevertide. So suggest that you can double or triple the um, PCR negativity early on on therapy. But if you prolong the novo combination, you're going to lose PCR response and probably this cannot be used as a long term, but maybe short term, final therapy, selected patients, you can use a de novo combination plus de novo bulevertide and PEC interferon in some of the patients. But really, cure means to stop therapy. So, do we have any evidence that we can stop, for example, bulevertide monotherapy? Well, the most important study is the 301 study registration trial. The data of therapy will be available probably at the end of 2024, probably 2025. So that's, uh, we need at least one year more from now. So we have only two studies providing some information on this important topic. This is the Austrian study. They stopped therapy in um, couple of patients treated with the novel combination on the top and five patients with monotherapy, but actually only two were PCR negative of therapy. So if you see these four patients were really possibly cured Delta patient PCR negative of therapy. What is very interesting in the lower part, two patient bulevertide monotherapy, but please look at the baseline viremia in this case only two logs of baseline varemia. That's very low for delta. 100 units of uh, RNA is very rare. On the left side, you see one with three logs only, and these were the only two patients PCR negative. So potentially new data will be presented at this meeting, MIR-204 study, showing off therapy cure of delta possible B if you use a de novo combination with PEG interferon and bulevertide. There is another one case, is a case from us, uh, where a three-year course of bulevertide monotherapy was able to cure hepatitis delta in these cirrhotics with esophageal viruses. What is surprising is it was negative during therapy and negative off therapy, delivered by OPSI, OPS therapy was negative for Delta and it was actually negative off therapy for three years now, but 
he remained as antigen positive. So it's possible to cure Delta with an entry inhibitor in a cirrhotic without losing a antigen. And this is something kind of new, new idea. Well, you might have another uh, target, which is a predilation. Predilation is an important cellular step, which is mandatory for the large antigen to link to S antigen and is mandatory for the Delta virus to be exported. Lunafenib as advantage is oral therapy, but a potential disadvantage is GI side effects, effects which that means they are boosted ritonavir. Well, ESL, the, for the first time, the D-liver phase three registration data has been presented. This is the primary endpoint at the end of therapy. And you see that placebo patients, all oral therapy, combo patients, PEG interferon, alpha monotherapy, primary endpoint is a combination, log tumor, the log decline, and normal LT. So all oral is doing 10%, combination 19%, much better than the placebo with 10% uh, of um, primary endpoint in PEG monotherapy. However, remember, this is a short-term therapy. You treat for one year, and then you check off therapy. So these are on-therapy data. But what about the PCR negativity data? These are the PCR negativity data. Undetectable RNA was defined as RNA below 40 units in this study, which means the uh, lower limit of quantification. Again, not really any difference for the all oral therapy compared to placebo, but the combination with 23% potential cure of hepatitis delta, but actually in the PEG mono was 19%. So, you know, I don't see a major difference between 23% and the 19%. So it's possible to cure some of the patients whether we really need a de novo combination with two drugs or PEG monotherapy is still an open issue. What's about interferon lambda? Can we cure delta with interferon lambda? Interferon lambda is an advantage. Um, um, safety, very safe profile, potentially safe profile, and a similar efficacy at interferon alpha. So this is a phase three registration trial, was based on the phase two data, 36% durable virologic response of therapy after one year of interferon lambda, and that's because it was designed at limit two, which is the phase three registration trial. Unfortunately, on September, we got a press release from Iger showing that the program was discontinued because of some safety issues, liver safety issues with four patients undergoing decompensation during therapy. What's about siRNA for hepatitis B? Well, that would be potentially the best idea. You stop hepatitis B without hepatitis B, you don't have propagation of hepatitis delta. But remember, S antigen is not required for replication of delta. It's only required for propagation and diffusion. So the only study available today is the RIFT from J and J. Uh, 17 patients were treated with the siRNA plus a nuke, and five patients were randomized to placebo. Top left, you see S antigen decline, significant S antigen decline treated, but not in the control, significant RNA decline in treated, but not in the control, but 70% of patients on therapy had a significant and important NT elevation, and they had to stop therapy as RNA. Why do we have this increase of LT levels in these patients? We don't know exactly. In the five patients who did not have LT elevation, actually four achieved the primary endpoint of the study, and two achieved PCR negativity on therapy. So this is not still a cure of hepatitis delta, but we are controlling hepatitis delta. And who are the patients who will develop an increase of ALT levels? Well, there's a strong relationship between baseline S antigen levels and ALT increase. If you have baseline S antigen levels above 4 lux, you will get an increase of LT. If it's below 4 lux, you will not see an increase of ALT. And that's the reason why the study has been amended. Um, amended. Uh, try all the new patients will have less than four logs or very S antigen. What's about a NAP? That's a long story. You know, there's been a study published almost 10 years ago, 12 patients, no control group, SIRN, sorry, REP2139, monotherapy for a few weeks, and PEG interference sequential therapy. They did excellent results, 42% S antigen loss 
off therapy, 58% potentially delta cure off therapy. These data have been confirmed at 3.5 years of treatment post follow up. The only problem is that you see these major increases of LT. This could be problematic, but if you look carefully in the left part, you see a si RNA decline already on monotherapy. So you don't need PEG interferon to see RNA decline, and there are some some uh, data from France suggesting that you could use as a monotherapy in Delta patients. Finally, monoclonal against hepatitis B, est antigen, can we cure Delta? Well, we don't know. These data are still ongoing, but there is one specific study assessing specifically SRNA monotherapy or monoclonal against hepatitis B um, as a single drugs or in combination specifically in Delta. So, ladies and gentlemen, to summarize, to sum up, we, for 43 years in Europe and for 45 years in US, really, uh, no therapy for Delta has been available. Now in Europe, bulevertide monotherapy is available, it's safe and effective up to week 96. For most of the patients, is a long-term suppressive therapy. But actually, for some of the patients, after two or three years, I think we can stop bulevertide. My suggestion would be one year or two years of target not detected, and then probably you could stop. Well, there are many new data now suggesting that you could use a de novo combination, bulevertide plus PEG interferon, with a specific aim to cure Delta and possibly B. Many new drugs, many new programs are ongoing. However, so far, you know, still we do not have an easy to use short term oral therapy to cure all our Delta patients. Thank you very much for your attention.